Hi everybody. In this video, we want to take a look at integrating Substance Painter into your D5 workflow. Now, this is a video that I've intended to do for a long time, but really had to kind of go back to Substance Painter after a long hiatus and get familiar with the program again. Now, this video is going to be part one of two. In part one, we're going to be approaching this from the point of view of an absolute beginner. This is going to be just a very, very basic introduction to what you can do with Substance Painter and is primarily intended for those who do not have a background in either video game art or game asset production. In other words, who might not be familiar with the game development pipeline or the use of the what was the original uh, Substance Suite, which is now owned by Adobe. It's a uh, Substance Painter is a really fantastic piece of software and definitely worth adding to your toolkit. And so we're going to approach this from the point of view of somebody who's never used it before. Now, later on, I plan on releasing a more intermediate video for those who are a little more, more experienced and who might be looking for something a little bit more involved. For this beginning tutorial, we're going to take a look at just the painting of a single object within Substance Painter and going from SketchUp to Substance Painter, to D5 Render. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, everybody, here we are in SketchUp. This is uh, SketchUp 2022 Pro, and this is just the default scale object here. And this is a pot object that I downloaded from the warehouse. It's uh, basically just a simple vase object. So the first thing we wanna do for absolute beginners going over to Substance Painter is just clear the scene. So I'm gonna left click on our scale measurement here and I'm just gonna delete them. All right, left click and drag out a selection. I'm gonna right click and just make sure that this is in a group. It doesn't really matter for export, but I just wanna make sure that this component is set to a group. Click on that. And then I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard and I am gonna just drag this into the origin. Generally speaking, sort of general rule of thumb, Make sure that everything is as close to the origin as possible, especially if you're going from one software to another. All right, this looks pretty good. Next thing we need to do is just export it. And we'll just need to go to File, Export, and 3D Graphic. Now, for our purposes, there's no textures on this object. Going forward, it might be something to be mindful of. Uh, the Substance Painter will recognize the existence of different textures as potentially different texture sets. And so if you're just doing a single object like this, it's really easy. Just assign a just generic color and export it away. All right, let's go over to Substance Painter. All right, everybody. So here we are in Substance Painter. Now, if you're brand new to Substance Painter, this can seem kind of intimidating at first. Please don't worry too much about the overall interface. We'll go through the tabs that matter just to get you up and running and the actual panels that matter just to get you up and running. So you'll probably just become more familiar with this just by watching the video. So don't worry too much. There's a lot of amazing functionality here, but just to paint or texture a single asset, we'll have a pretty limited set of tools that you can use. All right, our first step is to import the object. To do this, I'm gonna to go to File and just go New. And here you'll go. Now you'll see we have options for different templates. I am going to stick to just the PBR, which is the uh, physically based rendering. And I'm gonna leave this on basically the metallic and roughness alpha. Just That's absolutely fine, that's all we really need. It's just basically standard PBR, metallic, and roughness. This is the workflow that D5 also uses, and in many ways has sort of become the, the sort of bog standard universal approach. So just metallic roughness, there we go. Now, you will have to click on your file here, and so this will just load up whatever it is. I exported mine out using just FBX and just save it to somewhere on your computer. It doesn't really matter where. Now, we'll just select this and load up our file from there. Now, document resolution, I usually keep this around 1024. Please note that Substance Painter, though, and again, if you're an absolute beginner, Substance Painter 
is a non-destructive workflow, which means you can actually increase or decrease the resolution of the texture that you're working with on the fly. So for example, if we start with a low res 1024 square texture, and at any point that we actually want to upgrade that to maybe all the way up to 4K, for example, we can do that pretty quickly. Now, everything else, we can leave fine, direct X, open GL. If there's an issue here, we can always use the invert uh, normal map button within D5. So I'm just gonna leave it on direct X for now. And this is the really important one for us, which is auto unwrap. Now, if you're an architect, for example, or somebody who just does visualization, and if you don't particularly have a background in either like formal 3D programs or like I mentioned at the start, a game art program pipeline, you might not be aware of what UV unwrapping is for a lot of people, especially with the software like Lumion or Twin Motion right now, or even D5, you don't actually have to really be aware of it. But if you're coming from, for example, Blender or 3D Studio Max or Maya, well, you'll probably have come across the concept of a UV unwrap. At its most basic, programs do not know how to apply textures or materials to your object. And so the way we get around this is by effectively unwrapping. Uh, imagine the, the example used is either a football or soccer ball, or sometimes an orange being basically peeled and flattened down. Now, we don't have to go too much into this because we'll actually see how Substance Painter will auto UV unwrap this object, which will make texturing a lot, lot easier. Quite simply, it will allow us to paint on specific areas and have the texture apply the way we want it to and removes a lot of the guesswork. So uh, we're gonna just do the auto unwrap. We do have some options here, but again, if you're an absolute beginner, just leave these on the standard. And um, there's really nothing else you wanna press here and just click uh, select, pick your file and open it. Okay, everybody, I have imported our 3D Vaz model into Substance Painter and we're ready to go. Now, depending on your setup, you may actually find that, for example, your startup scene, your default one, may look a little bit like this. So you can see over here, we've got an asset library. We'll get a little bit more familiar with that as we go on. You'll have most likely a 3D view here, and you can zoom in with the middle mouse button. Holding down Alt and left click will allow you to pan around the object. And holding down Alt and the middle mouse button will, I'm sorry, that will allow you to orbit, holding out Alt and the middle mouse button will allow you to pan around. Relatively straightforward if you've used ZBrush in the past. If you're again coming from a program that doesn't involve sort of really this kind of workflow, uh, it can take a little bit of time to get in the habit of holding down the Alt and just, you know, getting into that a bit of practice. Okay, on the right, you'll also see that we have now the flattened object. So when we asked 3D Painter, uh, or sorry, Substance Painter, to basically unwrap this, this is what we actually get. And so, for example, if I was just really quickly to just uh, grab a material here and just start painting, you can see I can paint in either 3D or in 2D. There will be a time and a place for both, but for our purposes, for the most part, just to get you up and running, we're going to stick to working with just the 3D view. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. And I'm going to put my camera back here to basically just the 3D only. There we go. Again, zoom in middle mouse button. Holding down Alt and left click will allow you to orbit. And holding down Alt and the middle mouse button will allow you to pan your object around. And it will take, like I said, a little bit of time to get comfortable with this. But once you do, it will become really very much second nature. Just like ZBrush or Mudbox, uh, you know, Substance Painter is intended as a tool that's best used for the most part with a tablet, a graphics tablet or Wacom tablet. Now, if you don't have one, don't worry too much about that. We're not doing a huge amount of very fine texture work. We're not sculpting pores or fine wrinkles on an object. So I'm just going to use my mouse for this. But if you haven't yet invested in a graphics tablet, really do recommend that you get them. They're, they're pretty cheap now, and there's so many sort of uh, sort of generic ones out there. You don't have to buy the most expensive one. Although, if you have the money, do it, because they're really, really cool. But we're just going to use our mouse for right now. All right, continuing on, let's apply our base coat to this object. 
Now, what I have in my head is basically a pot uh, or vase that was originally terracotta or clay that has then been painted and then lacquered. So there should be a varnish layer on top. There are a couple of ways we can start this. In order to really just give ourselves a base layer, let me go back to my, effectively, my asset library over here. And you can see uh, on the left, we've got options for basically just paint objects. We've got smart materials, which we won't cover exactly in this uh, video. We've got ways to basically use masks. So a mask is a black and white image, so we can basically hide effects. For example, if you had a layer of white worn paint, you could apply a mask to that and the mask would basically use black and white to show or hide parts of that paint layer. This is the exact same workflow for Photoshop. We also have options for some more advanced things. We won't again cover any of these really throughout this video, but hopefully in the next one we will. Now, you can also see we do have different paint brushes as well. And really quickly, for example, if I was just to kind of go over here and I'm just going to just show you really quickly how a brush is going to work. Just left click and you can see now that the brush that I'm using is going to affect basically what we're painting, which in this case happens to be this terracotta clay. So you can see, got a lot of different options here and there's some really beautiful ones. Some of these will come directly from Photoshop, including the Kyle concept brushes, which is probably what we'll use to paint on our model in a little bit. We've also got a few more options here for different procedural effects and for our HDRI lighting environment. But for our purposes, let's just go ahead and step back before we've done anything. And I'm going to specifically apply the terracotta material. Go to the far left and I'm just back to basically my, really what is just a paint layer at its most basic. And these are just the default ones. You can see there's lots of different default ones, raw metal, um, wood, different things like that. I'm going to start by grabbing the clay terracotta. I'm going to left click and drag this straight on to the mesh. And you can see if I control Z that as we do that, we get a couple of different options. Firstly, on the bottom left of the screen, you'll see some keyboard shortcuts, which are really, really cool to have. And you can also see that the overall mesh gets highlighted. So I'm going to left click and apply clay terracotta to our object. Now, You'll also notice over here on the right, we've got a couple of things to look at. The first is the texture set. So for example, if we had multiple objects in our scene, they could all have different texture sets. Now, we only have one and you can see right now it is set to 1024, that's perfectly fine. We can at any point click on this and for example, change this to 2048 and you guys can see a little bit there, it is gonna recalculate. If I put this to 4096, you can kind of see this will actually get even higher fidelity. Not hugely noticeable right now, and I'm still in the habit of keeping it at 1024 because that's sort of just how I learned back in the day. And, you know, 1024 is a pretty low resolution texture by today's standards. So when you're working, 1024 or 2048 will be just fine. We'll probably end up exporting this at 4K, but for now, we'll leave it at 1024. You can see it looks a little bit blurry, but that's okay. You'll also notice that below this, we have, for example, a layers. Now, layers will work very similar to Photoshop. The main one or the main piece of advice I can give you is that you want to just be mindful of what sits on top of what. But remember, Substance Painter is a effectively non-destructive workflow. So layers can be moved around, adjusted, they can be masked, and you can always go back and rework them. So don't worry too much about this. You'll also notice that at the top, we've got our clay terracotta layer. That's going to sit right above. And you've got this layer one, which has nothing on it. So in other words, we can paint on that here in a moment. But for our purposes, I just like having this clay terracotta right here. Now, if you think about it like this, every layer can have different effects applied to it. The other thing to note is every layer can have color information height information. So if you're used to height or displacement, it's effectively the same thing. We've also got the roughness because if you remember at the start, we set up our PBR project to feature traditional kind of uh, roughness workflow. It can also have a metallic uh, aspect. 
It'll also have normal aspect, opacity, and emissive. Now, you don't have to have all of these on. For example, this scene is not going to use any emissive materials or any materials that use opacity, so there's no see-through component. So you can see that those are not highlighted. And again, we're on the clay terracotta layer, so you can see exactly what is in this, basically, uh, fill layer. We've got base color, height, rough, and metal. All right. You'll also notice the terracotta material, if we scroll on down here, has got two different colors. So in other words, we've got a terracotta. We could change this top color, and you can see its effects being updated in real time. And I'll move this out of the way here. And we've also got a secondary color, which is a lighter cream color. So that's just basically adding a base layer to our object. You could, of course, really do anything you wanted here. It doesn't really matter. We're going to paint on top of it. But that's cool to actually be able to see, and in my mind it makes a lot more sense to really paint your materials, in my mind, the way they'd actually be constructed. So for example, an old rustic object that's got a lot of rust on it, that's made of metal, I think it would be great to paint the metallic layer first, then maybe put on whatever paint layer, maybe it's white or red or blue, so that sits on top of the metal. To me that just makes a lot more logical sense, and hopefully by the end of this video I think that'll work well for you too. All right, let's go ahead and move on. And again, there's a lot of options here. One last thing I do want to mention is the projection. So I'm going to grab this clay earthenware, and I'm just going to apply this as well. And you can see that, again, by doing that, by just dragging it out onto the mesh, it creates a new layer at the top of the stack right here. You'll also have options for the projection. So for example, we can do project that material onto our substance, if you want to call it, but effectively material onto the object using the UV projection. We can also use the triplanar projection, which will give you a few more options. More importantly though, uh, for our purposes, we can probably just leave it on the UV projection because again, we now have UVs because we did the auto unwrap on the way in. One thing you do want to be mindful of though, is the actual, uh, really the tiling. In other words, really how large or small these materials are going to be. Now, I don't want this layer, this clay earthenware at the top, so I'm going to just hit delete on that guy. And you can see here we're back to the clay terracotta. Let's add an overall just white layer, as if basically we've built our clay pot, and now we're going to just add a base layer to that. In order to do this, we've got a couple of different options over here. You can see we've got options for uh, various things that you can add, paint, fill, levels. We also have options for masking. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Again, I don't want to overload anyone with a huge amount of details here in this one. The one I'm going to actually look for, though, is going to be the paint bucket tool. So I'm just going to add a basic empty flat layer. This is very similar to just adding a new layer in Photoshop. So I'm just going to click on that. And you can see this guy is layer two. Okay, so we've just got basically a generic layer with nothing on it. Let's go ahead and just grab a paintbrush and just start painting some white on this. So I'm going to go over here and again, make sure I'm on this paintbrush on the left. And I'm just going to grab the basic soft brush. Now, you can see when I do that, though, I'm still getting over here on the right. Effectively, what's going on is I still have this material loaded on the brush. So I need to go and just remove all of that. Now, by clicking off of that, you can see we've reset everything. Now what we have at its most basic, we click right here. We've got a brush with size properties. We can make it larger or smaller. We can also adjust the minimum size, but for our purposes, let's just move this up to a nice, relatively stable. This looks good. Somewhere about here looks really nice. You can also use the brackets keys on your keyboard to bring the, basically increase the size of the brush up or down. Uh, flow, we'll leave at 100, and all of this we can just leave. These are very similar, though. If you've used brushes in Photoshop, this will make a lot of sense. If we scroll on down, though, this is really what we do want to look at. This basic soft brush is going to apply a color. You can see I can toggle that on and off. Right now the base color is set to just gray. And I'll put this to full white here. And you can see we can, if I just left click and paint, you can see what's actually happening. But I want to put this to full white. There we go. 
it is also going to affect height, roughness, and the normal and opacity and emissive. Now, it won't actually do anything to these because if you scroll down, these should all be set to basically a default value. If not, you can move your mouse to right here, where, right where there's a little line right there. I'm just going to double click here and put these kind of back to effectively non-existent. I don't want really anything else on this except just paint. We can also just left click here on where we have numbers and just type in zero. And you can see this brush now when I paint with it is basically not going to affect the normal, not going to be metallic or rough. Let's see how this looks when we paint. Left click and just drag over. There we go. Now you can see if I spin my camera around, all the nooks and crannies that originally came with that terracotta layer are actually staying right where they should be. If, for example, I wanted to maybe go in here and increase the height or decrease the height, we can move the slider to left or right. But you can kind of see as I'm doing that and see the curvature changing, I'm overriding the original terracotta layer that we put there with new height information. I can also adjust the roughness of this. I could, for example, make this really specular and shiny. But again, we don't really want that. All we want is an actual just white paint layer. So let's again, let's go ahead and hit Control Z and just step back. Let's start painting. I'm just going to left click and drag my mouse over the object. Again, using those bracket keys, I can really make this much larger. And there we go. I'm just running this all the way over the object. Again, we could switch to the 2D mode if we wanted. But for our purposes, we're just going to stay painting in 3D. I think a lot of new users will find it just easier to kind of, you know, wrap their mind around just painting on a 3D object instead of trying to visualize it uh, on multiple dimensions at the same time. Okay, and we don't have to worry too much about the inside of the pot. It won't really be visible for the scene that I have in mind in D5, so we don't have to worry hugely about that. All right, this looks fine. Again, I'm keeping things simple. I'm not using any sort of fill layers or anything like that, just getting people familiar with how to paint. All right, this looks good. Now, I'm going to add a new layer on top of this again, just a regular, you can see, add layer. There we go. And now that we've got our, effectively like our baseline, like almost like plaster layer on top of the terracotta, I'm going to add some more paint. And so I'm going to go over here to the left and I'm going to, again, just click on where it says materials and I'm going to scroll down. What I'm looking for is actually going to be a metallic effect and what we really want is really something that gives us a sort of copper effect at the lid and then we'll slowly introduce those teals and blues all right i'm on a new layer so i could left click and drag this out and apply it but i don't want it everywhere i actually really just want it on my brush all right so this is what i'm going to use i am actually going to click on this stylized raw metal and now when I start painting, you can see what's happened is I'm painting this material, this surface, and I'm using the Kyle brush. All right, let's bring our, our brush up a little bit in size. And I'm just going to left click and run this around the lip. And I'm going to try over time to build up a nice sort of transition between these different materials. But you can see how easy it is to actually just paint onto the surface. And again, if I wanted to see how this looks in 2D, go up to the top here and just go 3D and 2D. And you can see exactly now what I'm painting will update in real time. It's pretty fantastic. There we go. Now, obviously, I don't want that everywhere. So I can also just hit E on my keyboard or I can just go up here to the eraser tool. I'm sorry, hit 2 on the keyboard. There's an old Photoshop. And I'm going to scale this guy up. And you can see I'm left clicking and I'm erasing from layer two, just slowly just pulling out that material, that color that I just painted on. All right. Now let's go back to the brush mode again. And I will put this back to where we're just seeing in 3D. And there we go. Let's just continue adding this. 
In order to see this in a little bit more higher fidelity, go up to where it says color 01 on the top right, which is our texture set, which is just one texture set. And I am going to put this to 2048. Now you might not see a huge improvement on your screen, but on, on mine, it looks a little bit better. And overall, kind of liking the look of this. Feel free to move the camera in and out with the middle mouse button. And again, tapping Alt and left clicking is just going to help you navigate. Okay, let's pull the camera really far back. I think this looks really, really nice. All right, let's move on. If you've made it to this point in the video, awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I want to have a brief interlude or segue and just talk a little bit more about the idea of painting in multiple channels and how to reset your brushes or remove substances so you're not just painting a surface. Okay, so you can see here, I have a completely flat cube. This is just one brought in from kind of SketchUp. It's, it's just a very, very basic cube, nothing more to it. If we look at it in uh, 3D and 2D, you can see Painter has already uh, unwrapped this for me. All right, let's go back to 3D only. And again, I'm over here on the right on layer three. I just have basically empty paint layers and I really want to just move myself out of the way here and just focus on this tab, the properties for paint. Now, you can see we've got size options, we've got flow options, so you can kind of get a softer feathered effect. But what I really want to look at is the idea of really working on multiple channels at the same time. So again, the height, roughness, normal opacity. So you can see down here, I have no stencil, I have no material, and I've just got all of the normal base, height, and roughness options. I'm going to turn all of these off just so you can kind of see what we're dealing with. Now, when I go to the base color, I'm just going to pick a, let's do the sort of via render kind of blue, somewhere about there. And I'm just left clicking. You can see I'm painting with a completely square, very ugly brush, but it, all I'm doing is effectively painting on color. There's no information here other than color. So for example, let's grab one of these substances. Let's grab this stylized natural. And so I'm just going to double click on that and that will load it up. And now I'm going to turn off all of these features again. And I am just painting color right onto the surface there. All right. So that hopefully makes a lot of sense. Now, in addition, we can also turn on the height options. So as I left click, there is height information built into this substance. And you can kind of see how that's looking now. There's also roughness. Again, D5 uses a PBR roughness workflow. So I'm going to turn on the roughness as well. And I'm going to left click and start painting this now. And you can kind of see, because it is obviously a clay material, it should not be specular or shining or have a high reflectivity value. And you can see as I paint now, I'm removing the, basically removing the highlights because this material is rough. Now, I can toggle metal on, but there is no metal on this. So if I grab the stylized raw metal and I left click, you can see now there is that metalness. So if we turn off height and roughness and we just have color and metal, you can see what's actually happening there. But the rough, there we go. That's kind of what I was trying to show you. There we go, looks nice. Now, normal, you're probably going to leave on for almost everything because normal is... If really the, the way that a lot of the detail is going to be read by your rendering program. Normal maps go back to, I mean, quite far back. Actually, I, mem I know that Halo 2 video game was one of the first to utilize them. So a normal map is basically going to have all of the fine detail in your material. Now, if you're struggling to basically just get rid of a substance, it's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is just scroll down and where it says substance material mode, just hit X and turn that off. Now, if we also want to add a particular brush, we can just go to the brush options up here and I'm just going to grab, let's just do, you know, good old Kyle's paint box and just drag this over or sorry, we can just double click on this. There we go. And that will assign it. Now that is actually going to be placed under the alpha setting. So an alpha is usually a black and white grayscale kind of map. So it'll be black, white, and grayscale in the middle. And the alpha will really just determine how the paint falls on your model. So if we, for example, go back here and I change the color to red, and I'm going to spin the camera here just a little bit, just so we can actually look right here. 
And again, holding right down. And I left click and I'm just going to dab this out. And make sure all of these guys are on. And I start painting. There we go. You can see now that the alpha is going to determine really just how that paint is applied to the surface. If I double click on this charcoal one, you can see different effect. Or I can do these cracks here, different effects. So that should hopefully help you out. Uh, that's sort of like, I think one of the big beginner issues is how do you just go back to a paintbrush and the concept of working on multiple channels simultaneously. Okay, uh, we're gonna pop back to the video now. Hopefully that should clarify things a little bit for you. And I believe we had just sort of left off yesterday. We were about to export our textures. So let's go ahead and continue with the painting. All right, cool. Okay, but one thing I do wanna mention before we go much further is just changing the environment lighting a little bit. We go to the top right of the screen and you can see we have options. This It's a little hard to see. It's just there to the right of where it says 2048, main shader. And just a little bit above that, we have an option right there. I'm gonna click on that. And this is going to be display settings. Now, the ones that we're looking for more specifically you can see under the environment settings, we can pick different panoramas. We're going to leave it on default. But if we scroll down to where it says environment alignment, let's change that from world to camera. And I think that will just help a little bit and then X out of that. All right. So we've got our nice gold layer sitting above the white layer. Again, just double click on layer two. I'm going to call this gold. There we go. Now I'm gonna again add one more layer. And this is again, just a straightforward paint layer. We're not doing fill layers or anything like that. I'm just gonna do paint. Click on that. All right, looks good. Now, what I want again to do is really just paint color and leave the terracotta height and sort of normal information there. So I need to go over here to where, uh, up a little bit to the left here, pick a brush, now, again, we can use a lot of these different brushes, but for this one, let's try this at the top. I favorited this one, and you can see it's gone to the top. So this is Kyle's paint box. I'm gonna click on that. Now, you can see over here on the right, if I wanna get rid of any materials that happen to be attached to this brush, just hit X. There we go. Now, again, nothing should really be working here. I'm gonna put the roughness just to you know, let's put it back to completely zero. Just, I want everything to be really just zeroed out for this. There we go. And the only thing I want to do now is change the color. So here you can see base color. I've got no materials in here, so I'm not painting with any sort of substances. I'm just painting with color. I'm going to click on the base color, and that's going to be this guy. And what we want is effectively something that blends between a light blue into darker blues and teals. And again, we will put a varnish layer on top. So I'm just going to start with really just putting a light blue here. Let's start here. I'll left click and just slowly start building this up. I actually need to make sure. Yep, yeah, need to make sure that there we go. Helps if I pick a color. There we go. Light blue looks nice. Let's X that and left click and slowly start working this out. And you can see we're not affecting any of the height information. And this is blending on top of the gold. There we go. Looks pretty nice. I'm going to scale my brush up. We're going to slowly do this. Now, I'm going to just paint one side here. And, and then I'll bounce forward to where the rest is done. Now that that looks good, I'm going to drag my brush down into the dark. Yeah, let's make it a little bit more interesting. All right. Looking good. And then I'm going to just start adding in some teals into this as well. Overall, we're trying to give the impression that as you get further down to the bottom, the, the vase paint is going to get darker. Now, I can also switch back to the another brush here as well if I want to just try something a little bit different. I'm again, just making sure to try and build up the color really organically. Try and make this look a little bit more natural. Make it effectively trying to make this look hand painted. So I'm going to continue to paint over this object and I'm going to again spin this. I'll bounce forward and cut through the video so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. 
but just try and add in as much randomness as you can. Try and make it look as organic as you can as well. It's messy and it should kind of look a little bit messy. Really what will help this at the very end is going to be that specular, shiny, glossy, if you will, varnish layer that will sit on top. But overall, I'm kind of liking the direction that this is going in. And again, we're working non-destructively. All right, I'll pause there, continue painting on this paint layer, and I'll see you in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. If you've made it to this part of the video, thank you so much for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. Let's continue. You can see we've pretty much painted over our pot. And this, I think, looks, you know, it's pretty rough. It looks the way it should. It's kind of handmade. It's got a rough surface. And we've got some color variation. Now, you might also be thinking, I painted over the gold, and this is somewhat true. But again, we're kind of working non-destructively here. So if I just grab my layers palette, and I'm just going to move that back here, you can see that layer three is the layer that has paint. So let's do put a P there for that. But the actual gold layer is underneath it. If I want to bring back the gold at any point, I can just left click and drag the gold layer above, and you can see now it looks pretty nice. We do have some gold that's made its way to the bottom, and we do kind of maybe want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go again to basically the eraser, number two on the keyboard, and I'm just left clicking. Now I am making sure I'm on the top layer because I don't want to erase anything else, just the gold that had maybe kind of trickled down a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And again, you'll notice if I toggle the layer visibility on and off, all of this is sitting on top of our original layer one, our clay terracotta layer surface that we dragged out. We've got the white layer. Then we've got an accidental layer two, which is empty. And speaking of empty, what we can do is select it and just go up here to the top right and hit remove layer, nothing on it. We've got the P layer, which is the paint layer. There we go. And on top now, the gold as well. Now, I like this gold, but let's see what we can do to actually add a bit more color variation to it. In order to add a bit more color variation to the gold at the top, I'm going to make sure I'm on the gold layer on the top, which I am. And again, you can select any layer and work on any layer at any point that you want. And we are keeping it pretty simple with just some basic paint layers here. But I've got the gold selected. What I can do is hit P on the keyboard to bring up effectively the, it's a color picker icon, but we're able to sample effectively the surface, which is all of the materials at the same time, not just color. So I'm going to left click on that. Looks nice. You can see over here now it has selected the right surface. I'm going to move this slider up a little bit. And I've got this alpha, which is just the brush maker Photoshop. But I want to do something a little bit different. Let's grab this dirt brush and I'm going to use that instead. So I'm going to click on that. There we go. The alpha that it's using is now this dirt brush. And I'm still going to be able to paint with the actual metal. So as I left click, you can see I'm painting on the lip right there. But in order to maybe just make some more changes to this, I do want to adjust the overall color as well. And if I scroll down, you can see, again, we've got our options for color, height, roughness, metal, normal, opacity, and emissive. I am going to select the uniform color, and I do want to make this a little bit darker. I want to add some basically not quite shading, and I'm not necessarily trying to add a dirt layer, but just add some, really some smudges and some variation to the surface. Just trying to make it look a little bit more natural. You know, it's really unlikely that if this was full kind of metal material that was placed on there, it's really unlikely that it would all be perfectly uniform in color. So I'm just going to add in some intentional imperfections. I'll run around the lip of the object here as well. And then I'm going to add in some more dark, just a little bit. Just left clicking again, just tapping alt and left click to spin the camera. We're keeping everything as default, default navigation, default, all that kind of stuff. We're not really changing anything. Hopefully default layout. And I'm just running this around. Okay, looks good. Making sure the lip at the top, which where you might have a bit more wear and tear. I think that looks quite nice. Okay, 
a little bit splotchy, but you know what? It'll work for our purposes. We can always come back in here again and just lighten this up if we want. Again, just left click and painting over. All right, I'm pretty happy with how that is looking right now. We're getting some nice transitions from really the really the gold into the blue. And I'm not going to get into masking in this video again. We're just going to keep it super simple, super straightforward. But there are other ways to blend between materials. But for our purposes right now, for just a sample project, I think this will work quite nicely. Now, one thing I am going to do is just drag down a little bit more gold. So what I'll do here is make this a little bit brighter. And I am just going to left click and just bring down a thin layer. I might need a different brush for this. We can try something, try this artistic brushing here and just sort of, yeah, bring a nice little layer down using the keys on the keyboard. And I'm holding down shift and left clicking to get a straight line. Basically I'm going to try and make this look a little bit like some of the gold almost just ran down the side of the pot. All right. Little bit more there, just a little bit. All right, everybody. Moving on, I want to add some more imperfections or really just some more paint detail. Now, again, we're using the terracotta surface for all of really the, the, the tangible texture that you can see. A lot of that is coming from the mixture of the height map and the normal map. Now, what I want to do is just, again, I'm going to select Kyle's paint box brush here on the left. I'm actually going to turn off the gold so you can kind of see that's on the top and make sure I'm on just the paint layer. You can see if I turn that off, we see the white underneath. Now, if we actually look on the bottom right here for the properties of this paintbrush, and I'm going to ignore the, everything here and scroll down a little bit and keep scrolling. You can also do that manually just by clicking these four tabs right here and it will scroll kind of for you, which is really very, very clever. And you'll notice here again, I've got options for height, roughness, metal, normal, and opacity. But I just want to again apply some more paint with a smaller brush, adding in kind of like some finer paint. I don't want it to affect anything else, just the color. So I'm going to ensure that I turn off the height, roughness, metallic, normal, and the opacity, which we're not using anyway. And now you can see I've just got the base color. I click on this. And again, I can move this little guy here, just move it and pick something a little bit. Let's go for again, I'm looking for some blues and I'm gonna use the bracket keys to just bring my brush down. And again, if we zoom in, you can see when I'm painting now, all I'm doing is adding paint, not affecting effectively the surface, which is going to be the height and the normal, just going in and adding more paint. So I'm gonna do a second pass adding even more fine detail to the paint layer. All right, I'll bounce back when I'm done. All right, everybody, you can see we've got a second pass or run through, just adding a lot more surface variation, adding all this kind of, really sort of making it look a little bit more constructed and a little less perfect. Now, we only adjusted that paint there. For the next section, what I'd like to do is paint in some additional information on this paint layer. More specifically, painting in just imperfections, almost like micro imperfections on the surface. So again, I've gone over here and I've grabbed, a, just to make sure we're on the paintbrush, I'm gonna use Kyle's Real Watercolor Salt Course. And over on the actual material sort of tab over here on the right, the properties for the paint, if I'm careful, I can just put this to height. So I need to make sure that I have everything else selected and I'm going to turn off color. And so if I crank this really far to the left and I left click, you can see what we're doing. We're affecting that height map and we're not altering the color, but we are just saying, hey, there's some basically imperfections or almost like areas gone into the surface. In order to really better facilitate this, we can also turn on the normal so that now this is going to be painting on just the height and the actual normal. I'm gonna put these quite low and I'm gonna make my brush quite small. And I'm just gonna left click and I'm gonna start adding in a little bit of this. Now we don't wanna to go too crazy with this and I don't want it to look like the entire surface has been really sort of overly worked, 
but just adding in effectively some of this very fine detail. Just very fine. Now, a safe way to work on this might also be to duplicate this paint layer and add this to a new layer, but whatever, we're just gonna add this in ourselves. Again, I'm not gonna do it everywhere. I'm gonna make sure the brush is set to just pretty fine and just left click and run this over. Now I've got a little bit up here, there we go. And I'm just adding in that imperfection. Now again, this is all on the negative, so I can add a little dash of height and this is also going to be on the normal as well. So all goes well. We should be adding to the actual surface. So taking some away and adding some as well. That's just really going to increase the sort of effectively the surface variation. Let's run that over. And again, we're keeping this nice and simple. Not, not go too crazy. Okay, looks good. All right, I'm pretty happy with the overall look of this, especially considering how it looked coming from SketchUp. Last thing we want to do is add our varnish layer. The last thing we want to do is just add a varnish layer. Now, Substance Painter uh, does not really let you sort of collapse everything the way you would think in Photoshop. So I'm going to put my, just put the layers back to 1024. And what we can do is I'm going to open up this tab a little bit here so you guys can see. Just drag this down. I'm going to hold down shift and select all of these and just go to the top right where I can group and just add a group. It's that little folder icon. There we go. And this group now will basically contain all of these layers. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add one more paint layer. It's just a simple layer. It's going to be in this group. You can also drag it at the top or out of the group. That's not fine. And what I want to do is paint our varnish layer. Now, there are kind of ways you can do this with filters and things like that, but keeping it simple, we're just going to paint a basic white layer. So I will go to the brushes again. And for this, we can pretty much just use the basic soft brush. And over on the right, I'm going to scroll down here and just make sure that I'm not really painting on everything. Don't really need color. Now, height, we're not going to add because it's a thin layer. There should be nothing on it. Make sure metal is off as well. Really, we're just going to paint a layer that's going to sit on top. Now, in terms of, let's just crank this to the right to show you. And looking at the specular highlights here. And if we need to move our light, we can just hold down shift and the right mouse button. And you can see here now, with the roughness taken to the right, you can left click and see what's happening. It's removing all of that roughness. So in other words, it's going to be just a completely matte surface. So we want ours to go the opposite way. We want it to be quite a shiny, very kind of specular varnish layer that sits on top. So again, I'm going to left click and yeah, all right. And start brushing this in. Holding down shift and move the camera, you can see, I think we need to make it even shinier than that. So let's move this pretty far to the right. There we go. Now we're getting the result I think that we actually want. So what I'm going to do is make my brush really large, left click and just apply this all over the model. And again, we're keeping it really simple. We're just going to paint it on this empty paint layer. We're not doing anything fancy, but I do want to make sure that the entire model has been filled. And again, just spinning your camera and you won't really see necessarily anything because we're not really painting color. All we're doing is painting a low roughness and that by default becomes a shinier surface. All right, I'm pretty happy with the look of that. And the metal looks okay. And overall, I, I like the look that we've got going on here. We could spend a lot of time fine tuning this, but I think for, you know, your first, hopefully your first vase painting, I think this will work just fine. Let's put the color all the way up to 4096 and just see here. And by the way, I mean color, I mean the texture set. Oh yeah, there we go. You can see we still have a really nice look here. The surface looks pitted, it's interesting, but it's getting that really nice shine effect. Honestly, I'd probably take the shine up a little bit more. And if you were doing this properly, I think, you know, we'd kind of maybe isolate the metal so it's not, you know, not identical looking in terms of specularity or roughness or shininess. 
we are pretty much done with our basically our hopefully our intro to substance painter for architectural visualization users or d5 users in particular now in order to get this over to d5 we need to export it so to export the mesh we can just go file export mesh and you do want to do this don't use the one the model from sketchup or whatever program you're in because that will not have the uvs assigned so we are going to go export mesh i'm going to turn off uh tessellation and not apply triangulation this model is actually nice and quad based so basically all the polygons are nicely square and i'm just going to hit export and there we go you can see here it's going to go to documents adobe substance painter export vas there we go i'm going to click fbx say yes replace it and say yes okay the next one though is going to be the materials export textures now this is going to be a lot of like menu content really quickly so we've got a lot of different ways we can do this we can do output templates and you can see there are a lot of options here which is really really fantastic and yes, we could just use the PBR metallic roughness, but I'm just going to ignore this and keep it really simple. I'm just going to go to settings, output directory. This is me, Adobe Substance 3D Painter export, output template, metallic roughness, check, and then just do JPEGs. And again, I'm not going to do the 8 bits and dither and just keep it at 8 bits. And I'm going to do 4096. That's it. That's just not using a preset or anything like that. Just telling it where to go and in what file format to do this in. And then I'm just going to uh, export. And I'm going to bounce over to D5 and take a look at this with all the materials applied. All right. We'll see you in a minute. All right, everybody. So here we are at the end of the video. And this is our Vaz object imported in 2D5. And I'm just going to put the speed down here a little bit just so the camera's not bouncing around. And you can see we can pan and navigate around this quite nicely. And there's our finished object. A couple of things on the materials to be mindful of. And again, I'm kind of cognizant that I want to make this a beginner tutorial. And so if we just hit I on the keyboard, we should be able to select our material. There we go. And if I move myself out of the way, you can see under the base color map, this is what we actually have, which is the Vaz test color. I believe exported all of these were in 4K. The normal map, now there are two types of normal maps and there's OpenGL and DirectX. I'm not sure off the top of my head which one that D5 uses. Maybe somebody can throw that in the comments below. But you might have to experiment with the normal value, either inverting it or also actually just going in here and making sure that inverted is actually flipped. My current settings were negative one, linear, which it should be, I believe, linear and inverted. And so that will give you those really the pops of metal coming out. You can kind of see as I move this light around them coming off the surface, which resembles the terracotta effect that we were going for. To the best of my knowledge, D5 does not play very nicely with displacement maps on objects just yet. It, it will do it on, on flat walls, fine, as long as they are UV unwrapped. But for the most part, even just like adjusting the normal map to make sure it looks, go really by your eye what looks good. Then specular is left uh, neutral, roughness is cranked all the way using the roughness map. And the metallic should be, I think, based on some previous stuff, I'm going to put it at about 99 uh, or it should be at 0.99, um, but whatever. No, I'm not really sure there's a huge difference. Some of the D5 materials do generally have metalness set to 0.99, and some are set to 1. Not sure if it makes much difference, really. You can see we do get a nice transition between the metal and the actual teal. Now, one thing I wish I kind of wrapped up was the varnish layer. It is there. You can see with the light moving around it, you get a specular sheen. I think I should have really, especially around the outer edges, I really should have cranked that up all the way and made it almost a completely uh, sort of like like there's a layer of paint or varnish on the outer edge. And, and that's something that might have taken a bit more experimentation. Now, one last thing to note, AO maps, I don't really have one for this. When it comes to working with Substance Painter, one of the steps that we skipped over for ease of use is to not bake textures and and again that's a topic that's not for really for beginners and so we left that out but baking different texture maps from the object 
would actually give us an AO or ambient occlusion layer. But we'll leave that for the next video. Okay, with that being said, um, I hope that you found that a useful introduction to Adobe's Substance Painter, and I hope it gives you enough sort of like pointers so that you'd feel free to start experimenting with it yourself. There's a lot of great resources out there and um, some really good stuff from Adobe. And okay, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.